Welcome to Space Time with Dave. I am Dave. This is my background extraction tutorial for Pixin site. Uh, when do you need to do background extraction? So um, uh, I have a couple of images to show. First of all, this is my shot of M33 from uh, this uh, past fall. And you can see some, uh, some gradient coming through here. It's kind of brown over here and kind of blue and lighter uh, in this corner. And um, I also have uh, my image of Thor's helmet from just last month. And here you can also see kind of a similar gradient. Um, and I, I'm part of the reason for this is uh, the, the, the reason I have this gradient is because of imperfect uh, flat frames that I'm calibrating in. But if I didn't calibrate the flat frames, then I would have uh, vignetting from my telescope. So. Um, in, a, in a perfect world, you don't need any background uh, subtraction because your field is perfectly flat and you, or you, you either did raw conversion if you shot with like a modern uh, DSLR and a, and a lens or you shot flat frames that work correctly and you don't have these, these gradients. But I have a little bit of gradient so I need to do some extraction. Uh, you might also need to do background extraction uh, to remove any sky glow from a light polluted area. Uh, both of these were shot in very dark Bortle uh, zero or one sites. So um, this is definitely a uh, sort of, a, I guess you could say a user uh, created gradient. Um, I like to show the final products. Um, so this is my, my final process version of Thor's helmet. Uh, very cool, very cool object. You can see a nice flat field all the way across here. The, the background is pretty evenly dark um, so that looks pretty cool and here's my M33 which I was just looking at and realized that maybe I didn't quite you know um, remove as much of the background glow as I could have so maybe a little bit of a little bit of background glow going on over here and a nice background here so uh, maybe I can do a better job in this tutorial Pixinsight has two different tools in the background modulization. And so let's take a look at the automatic background extractor. First of all, this is the quick and easy, dirty, easy to use tool. Um, pretty much all you do is come down here and do target image correction, set the correction to subtraction and apply it. The automatic background extractor works well sometimes. On some images it works just as good as the, the dynamic background extraction tutorial, the main advantage is it's much quicker and it doesn't involve uh, the manual work that we're gonna have to do. So here is uh, um, oh, the checkboxes here. Um, you can have it discard the background model. I, I like to have it show me the background model because I wanna know what it's removing. So if I auto stretch that, now you can really clearly see that I really just removed just that gradient. I mean, here's the Here's the uh, original image, and so there's this sort of brownish gradient through here, and it's darker over here. So you can see that's that's what it removed, it's darker here, and uh, got rid of that gradient. So here's the um, here's the image after the subtraction, and just kind of viewing this, you know, looking at it like this, this looks you know pretty flat, pretty even, you know, all the way all the way across. So. Um, in, in this image, the background automatic tool works pretty well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close that. But there are images where it's not going to work well, which is my uh, shot of M33. So take a look at what it does here. So it's done on M33, and take a look at what the background looks like on here. Oops, let me auto stretch that. So uh, it definitely removed this gradient, darker over here. But notice there's sort of like this ring. So take a look at what it did to the image. Uh, so there's this ugly ring through here. So I'm not really sure what's what's going on, why it doesn't work as good on this image. But um, I've seen a few, uh, you know, people, you know, first or second time processing in Pixinsight and they, and they have this sort of ringing going on here. Um, so in this case, we're going to not use the automatic tool. We're going to use the much more powerful dynamic background extraction tool. So to use the dynamic background extraction tool, you load this up and you just click inside the image you want to apply this on and it gives you the crosshair and it kind of activates this tool. 
So what you need to do is you need to uh, first generate the samples. Um, the default samples per row is probably not enough. I think we probably want 15. And on this uh, image, I think the default sample radius of uh, 15 is going to work well. So just hit generate. So now what it has done is it has auto generated all these points that you can see. And what those points are going to do is look at the um, the pixels inside the region of these samples here and um, uh, apply the kind of an average across the whole image to get an idea of what the background looks like. So this is generating a model of the background. The sample radius size of uh, 15 works works well on this image. You may need to reduce that sample radius uh, for much more dense uh, star fields. So probably in this uh, Thor's helmet image where there's a lot more uh, a lot more stars per area, um, you might need a smaller sample radius, and you'll see why in a minute. Uh, next is to increase the tolerance. We're going to play around with increasing the tolerance to um, get the samples to propagate across the whole image. So let's try 0.75. Just increase it a little bit at a time and re-hit generate. And so it picked up a little bit more, but it's still kind of missing this corner. So let's try a tolerance of 1. There we go. So now it's picking up more. And... Um, You'll notice that the uh, some of these the, the default color of these can kind of be hard to see against the background. So look, I can change the color here. So maybe maybe it makes more sense to have these be kind of like a like a blue, and now they kind of stand out against the against the background a little better there. Maybe like a like a baby blue. Yeah, there we go. Um, so now there's a uh, selected sample color and bad sample color. So a bad sample would be like that one there, um, which we don't want, so delete that. So what we need to do now is very tedious. We have to go through each and every single one of these points and uh, make sure that they are pointing on just background and not stars. So it, you can see it gives us a preview of what this sample, the selected sample, looks like. And it's, kind of, it's an inverted um, view, so anything that's all white is all black. So we want to get just background. And you can see when I get over stars and diffraction spike or nebulosity um, that, that that is bad because I can see black in there. So what I want to see is just mostly white and noise, so that's that's uh, so that's a good that's a good spot. This one here, and yeah, that one's kind of like on a little smudge or a star, so just kind of move it. And then this one, if you hold space bar, you can uh, drag the image around. So that one looks good. That one looks good. You definitely want to make sure you get the edges of the image and the corners. So if there happened to be a, a bright star, like right there in the corner. Then maybe what I might do is put two samples that are kind of around the star, but I'm not going to do that. And if you have a, a sample selected, you can just hit delete on your keyboard to remove them. Next one looks good. So now here you can see it kind of skipped one, so we can click to add, and we can add as many as we want. But we really don't need that many. Whoops, that was an accidental one, and I don't need that one. So spacebar, I kind of work in a line. I'll go up and down the line, and well, that one's kind of close to a star. I move it away. See, that one's good. It missed one, so maybe I'll add one there. That one looks good. This one, need to move it a little bit. Um, this one, good. That one, move it. This one, a little bit over here. This one, move it. So I just kind of go one by one through these. It's very tedious and uh, time consuming, um, but but it's worth. It'll be worthwhile in the end. Um, it kind of divides the image into these four uh, quadrants, and uh, I find that's you know helpful. I kind of work on one at a time. So we want to make sure that none of these samples are covering any area of uh, of the object that we're imaging. We want just background, and so I. You can see that, especially with a galaxy, you know, there's 
no really defined edge to it. So some of these I maybe want to back them away a bit. I don't want to subtract the object that I was trying to image. So I'm going to give those plenty of room on those samples. And this one a little bit over here. This one here. That one there. Just move these along. Alrighty. Okay, so that, that, that corner is done. So I'm going to go through all of these points. And I'm going to, so you can see these ones obviously are no good because these are right on top of the galaxy. And those are no good. And even this one because this spiral arm kind of comes out here. So I think I'm going to delete just getting an overview. I'm going to make sure I give plenty of room for the galaxy. I don't want to subtract any galactic matter here. And so there, there, there. Um, okay, so now I'm going to go through and do the rest of this. Okay, so that is pretty good. That should be done. Uh, it's good to, good idea to zoom out and kind of just make sure that none of these are covering your object here. And I think that's going to be pretty good. So now the rest of this works just like the automatic tool, target image correction. The correction type we're going to do is subtraction. And just hit the check and let it do its thing. Okay, all set. So I'm just going to minimize that. And I like to look at the background. Let's see what it removed. Yeah, so you can see it definitely removed that gradient without that sort of, sort of ring that we had. And let's take a look at the processed image. So a much flatter background than uh, what we had before. And from here, I would uh, go ahead and do the rest of my uh, processing. If you want to be more uh, perfectionist than this, and normally I, I am, uh, I think I would, I would go through and uh, try to remove this again with another iteration of background subtraction. But that's pretty good. That's, that's definitely better than, than what it was with this obvious gradient here. So that's pretty much it. That is, um, that is it. So now from here, I would proceed to do my, my processing as I've... Uh, uh, always do with my uh, check my tutorial video for that uh, the next step would be background neutralization and color calibration I can just do that really quickly to see what I get there and it doesn't look like it did a whole lot but um, that's okay so that is pretty much it that is the dynamic background extraction uh, tool um, very powerful tool in PixInsight one of the one of several tools that really makes Picks in sight worthwhile. And so just to show you again what my final image looked like. So that is it. Uh, hopefully you found that helpful. Um, hopefully you can you know put this to good use on your images. Um, I uh, I appreciate all the feedback and the um, and the words of encouragement and uh, from everybody. If you have any uh, questions or comments how I can improve this process or how you can uh, apply this to your own images. Uh, please let me know in the comments and as always uh, uh, please subscribe and share and I'll catch you guys next time.